Okay, it's an optional question. Again, taking uh, these options is going to give you better options in life. Uh, the, the question comes from an SAT, by the way. Um, I was um, you know, pleasantly surprised to read the question in the SAT. And the SAT is, a, a, I'm going to say, a scholastic aptitude test. kind of determines if a student is capable of doing college-level study. Right. This is certainly material that we've discussed in class, though. You know, rational numbers are <coughs> just a ratio of integers. So this form over here, where A and B are integers. Um, let me put the notation down for integers. I'm not going to write the word down because it's not going to fit in there. Let me erase this. The notation for integers is just this over here, um, the set Z. All right. So that's the integers. A and B are integers. B can't be zero, by the way. So you start to realize <coughs> the positive rational numbers are coming from an interval from zero off to infinity. Right? That's that case over there. Now, there's no element in that set that's smaller than all other elements in the set. I mean, there's all numbers that are greater than zero, but there's no small number in that set that's smaller than all other numbers. All right? So th this wouldn't happen. Let me look at the next case. The next case is going to be, um, you know, where r squared is greater than or equal to 2. Well, let's write that down. Let me get my eraser out again. And r squared, it's a rational number again, greater than or equal to 2. We've done these before. Let me just say r squared minus 2, greater than or equal to 0. Number line goes down. On the number line, I'll put the zeros down, which is minus root 2 and root 2. I'd shade those numbers because it could be equal to zero at that. Then I do my side analysis. The number after root two, like five, clearly positive. This gets shaded in. And if you look at the uh, numbers uh, between minus root two and two, like zero, that would be negative. So that's not going to be satisfied, that inequality. Go below minus root two, like minus three, plug it in. It would turn out to be positive. So I got an interval for this one now. For two, the interval is going to be the Roman numeral two, minus infinity up to minus root two union root 2 off to infinity. Again, there's no L in that set that's smaller than all other elements. So this one gets crossed off. All right? Let me uh, erase this, and let's go to the third one. And the third one, actually, I'm getting a little better at this, is r squared, rational number, greater than 4. Well, we kind of just did something like that. So I'm going to say 2 and minus 2. Not equal to that, but something like this over here. And what does that set look like? Minus infinity to minus 2, union to up to infinity. Again, there's no element in that set that's smaller than all other uh, elements in the set. So what's the correct answer? The correct answer is none. All right? Let me go to the next page, show you where the work is written down for you. And again, I, I want to point out we're dealing with uh, ratio of integers. Um, a set of positive rational numbers says from that interval over there. They talk about the other one, which is r squared greater than 2, comes from this set over here. And they talked about this set of numbers, this over here. And again, they're rational numbers. Now, granted, there are numbers in that set that are not rational, but they're just, we're talking about subsets of those things, or rational numbers. And in, in, in all those sets, there's no such thing as a small element that's smaller than all others. So again, the answer would be A. The correct answer would be choice A. And what's choice A? None of those sets. Thank you so much.